welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. It's a nifty little project that I find online. In any case, it does very well demonstrates how as long as you recreate these different parts, you can create an instrument that sounds quite similar. Um, notice how they did, however, preserve, they use a bow very similar to a regular cello bow. The strings are very similar, so the excitation part and the frequency selection part seem similar to create a similar sound. Um, you got the same similar tension and length, so that's why you're selecting similar frequencies. And then the piece they really, really um, substitute out is the amplification. Instead of using a nice looking cello body, they use something else. Um, it still achieve amplification because all you need is a big, big box of air. It changes the tone, uh, the timbre, I guess, just a little bit. But mainly you can create a similar sounding instrument by just focusing on these three things. Then of the three parts, I like to focus mostly on the frequency selection part where we're still using our standing wave and we have, for instance, closed close system. That's kind of like the cello where you have the string fixed down at the bottom at the bridge and up at the tuning peg, fixed on both sides, closed close system. You get these kind of resonance mode on the left. Then on the right, you have open close system and that might be something like a saxophone where you have it open on the one side but it's closed with the reed on the other side and so these are kind of the modes you get now through superposition and a fixed length given that we're exciting all the different frequencies it is possible that all these different modes all happen at once so you have you would have sound of all these different frequency at the same time but in a minute, I'll show you why it's not really that bad. We still kind of would perceive the sound as one coherent sound. And that's because of this. If you notice, um, the lowest frequency here, if we call that F0 for the fundamental frequency, fundamental frequency, then this guy, the next n equals 2 mode, is has a frequency of twice the fundamental frequency and then three times. So these are all integer multiples of the fundamental frequency and that's why that frequency is so quote unquote fundamental. On here on the open close, oh by the way the close close works the same as the open open which might be a flute that's open on both ends. Now close open once again we still call the lowest resonance frequency the fundamental frequency then the next one is going to be 3F0 and 5F0. So these, oops, <laughs> these guys are going to be odd integer multiple, but they're still integer multiples. And something happens when they add up. Backing off a bit, to look closer at what frequency does in terms of uh, the sound that we hear, um, let's kind of draw the musical instrument here. So we have the string that's vibing back and forth, in this case in the fundamental frequency. As can create some kind of traveling waves which hits our ear at some kind of X. So over here we have cosine A cosine KX minus omega T. And of course this omega is F divided by 2 pi. Sorry, that's 2 pi F. And then what the eardrum eventually feels because it is at a fixed distance, um, we can get a time graph probably over pressure and then it's gonna get some kind of frequency like that. And that's how we perceive the sound at a certain frequency. But superposition happens and say we have the second mode which vibrates at twice the frequency, roughly that. So instead of Kx omega t we have the omega now is twice the omega of the one. So we'll also have, yeah, something like that. A pressure over time graph that's going to be like that. And we add those up. Now, because they're integer multiple each other, they're going to look something not quite so bad when, not super complicated when you add them up. And I'll show you here with the help of 
wolf m alpha. So here I'm graphing cosine of that simply. And it looks pretty benign. It's going to be something that repeats every 2 pi, as you can see here, from this point to that point. That's 2 pi, 6 point something. And then we add, keep it simple, we'll just have twice the frequency and we'll keep the same amplitude as 1. And we graph that. And you see, while it doesn't look like a simple cosine curve anymore, uh, it still is periodic from here to here, also 2 pi period. The waveform has changed a little bit, but it still um, has a frequency. The waveform still repeats at 2 pi. And the same pattern kind of applies if we add 3x and 4x and so on. You've, your waveform becomes a little more complex, but it still has the periodicity of 2 pi. And that is why we would still kind of interpret the sound as the fundamental frequency, even though all these different frequencies are in there. Now, of course, because the waveform is different, what we call the timber, the quality of the sound is going to be different. So that's why when a guitar plays a C note, it's going to be different to how when a flute plays a C note. Therefore, from this pressure versus time kind of graph, what we can kind of see is we can see what the fundamental frequency is. We can get the period overall and get kind of the fundamental frequency, but it's kind of hard to see from the waveform itself how it's made up of the first three modes in the same proportion. It could be made of different proportion and whatnot. And so to compare sound, it's not really useful to look at this kind of form, um, this time graph form, because a lot of information is all jumbled up together. To make things a little more, to make a little more sense, what we do then is use the Fourier transform. For the scope of this course, we're not going to be concerning ourselves so much on how to mathematically evaluate the Fourier transform, but we'll focus on what it is, how it looks like, and how to interpret the Fourier transform and the spectrum graph that you will end up seeing. What Fourier transform does is it takes the our kind of pressure versus time graph and then breaks it down into its respective sine and cosine components of all these different frequencies, all these different waves that comes through. It breaks it down to see you have some amplitude here, some amplitude here, and some amplitude there. In our case, they're all exactly equal because we already know. And then they graph it with respect to the omega or, or the f, right? And in this case, what you get is you have one little peak at our F naught, and then another peak at two F naught, and another peak at three F naught. So instead of looking at these fairly complicated time graph, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break them down into all sorry, sine and cosine curves of all different frequency. And then we'll graph how big each of these components are. And because it often comes from instruments, even our voice works very similar to an instrument, you will have these peaks where the lowest frequency has a big component, and that's the fundamental frequency. And the subsequent peaks are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency as we described before because of the resonance. These things are what we call harmonics. When you're integer multiple of something, it fits into the other waveform really well and we give it a special name called harmonics. And then just as a quick round off, the word octave that you hear in music, that's two times your frequency. So when you have a note 
a C note then you take that note and you multiply it by sorry you take that note and you multiply the frequency by 2 you get C in the next octave a high C for instance or and then if you go the other way if you divide it by 2 then you have a low C and when you do these two times multiplication you will get harmonics right they will fit well into each other because they're integer multiple of each other so we'll look more at Fourier spectrums of different sounds and voices um, in class but to round things off I'd like to refer you to an other video much better produced than mine <laughs> that talks about the specific um, sending wave in a flute and a clarinet hopefully you Enjoy that and we'll see you in class.